I've used the word faithfulness a lot when I think about Hope Church becoming 25 years old. God's faithfulness and the faithfulness of a lot of people is a really, really important thread of what I sense is part of the story of Hope Church. Look what God has done. Look at the people he has brought. And we have our problems and we have our challenges. But in the bigger picture, behold, God has done good things. When we started Hope Church, what we dreamed about was creating a really vital, healthy church that could meet people where they are and help introduce them to Christ. We started right here in Manchester, Massachusetts. Uh, some of the locals call it Manchester by the sea because we're right looking at the harbor over here at this coffee shop. It was late spring of 97 and we had been having all these conversations about should we really try to start a church? And I just remember saying, you know what we need to do? We need to set apart a day and we need to talk about anything and everything that we need to talk about. But yeah, our heart from the beginning was we would love to create a church that removes as many obstacles as possible. I fundamentally believe people are hungry for God, want God, if they can find a safe place to pursue that hunger. And so we said, let's try to do our best to influence a church that creates that kind of a place. And then we're like, yeah, but you know what? There's still more to talk about. And we said, let's go over to the clam box. <laughs> I think they're using like non-fat oil though now, David. You I think? can tell the difference from 25 years ago. You think so? <laughs> it was probably motor oil yeah. in 1997 <laughs> and now it's peanut oil. <laughs> Trying to sort through how this all works out and what we were feeling, I think it's a combination of being both excited and scared. Yeah. I think we both sort of felt that. I've almost come to think if God's calling you to something meaningful, I think excited and scared are both reasonable indicators That's great. of what it means to have a sense of embarking on something like this. Jesus was a part of those conversations. When just us figuring it out and telling God what we wanted to do, it was like God having us in conversation and discovering. Uh, much like we do when we pray, talking to God or read His Word. And I think we entered that day saying, look, we may come to the end of the day and say, no, we don't feel like this is what we should do. And there probably were some heartbreak hill moments when we were speaking uh, to one another and thinking, huh, that's interesting. But again, we, in a sense, made it through in, in all these years of hope. Even in the heartbreak hill moments, God has been doing his work uh, through his persevering acts as we choose to do some exciting but nerve-wracking things that God will give you what you need. And then I think we said, let's go to the chapel at Gordon-Conwell right. and let's pray together and let's try to just lay this in the Lord's presence. And we had a real sense of peace about it. Yes. I don't know that we had a sense that God said, absolutely, yes, go for it. We right. did have a lot of endorsing positives along right. the way. Like we could have said, okay, check, 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 all these things are working out. Mm -hmm. But that would be like seeking just the world's peace. But as we prayed, uh, I did have a sense of God's peace. Uh, the alliteration of it would be, I didn't feel a pause, but a peace. But the fact that we ended here in prayer, I think was probably formative to how we even began the work at, at Hope. In a sense, our final chapter of talking together was prayer, and prayer has become the first chapter of our work at Hope. From the earliest days at Hope, we were always talking about praying for the people who have never been here, the people we have yet to meet, the people who God will bring. That is 100% true in my own perspective and heart today, as much as it was in the earliest days of hope. The joy and the delight of the experience is gonna be for the people whose hearts are open toward 
the vital future that's ahead of us, who look toward that future with optimism and hope, and who look toward new people with a sense of, oh, I'd love to get to know new people. I'm open to rich relationships happening with people who are new. So don't sort of close your circle off. When you ask about what I'm most excited about for the future, what immediately comes to mind because you use future was the next generation. We made a decision here several years ago not to build some 1,500 seat auditorium that everybody can come to us. We want to invest in the next generation. So what I'm excited about in the future is when I see 100 plus young people at the 11 o'clock service closing their eyes and raising their hands in worship and saying, God, we need you. In Christ, who is making all things new and who one day will return and, and, and redeem everything, the best is always yet to come. So I think that means the church is a future-oriented people. We remember what's behind us with gratitude and praise to be reminded of His faithfulness and His goodness. But as I said, not to wallow in it or live in it, but to be reminded to then say, all right, we've seen His faithfulness in the past, so we can look toward the future with confidence and with hope. But if you've been around here for a long time, and by the way, when it comes to eternity, 25 years is not a long time. I would say we're just beginning. Always believe that. The best is still yet to come because there's a place here for people and we want people to find life. And when they find life here, they'll begin to serve and follow the God who is a creative God. In the beginning, God created. He's put a creative element in each of us and those creative elements can be used to reach more people.